aforementioned trio of spin doctors, Ian. Who's one? Hi, Keris and Ian. Oh, yeah? So, is Puff Daddy the Pete Waterman of rap? Our sexy French boys air the sound of the future. And what exactly was Baggy? Just done this official World Cup song which was unveiled tonight. Are you pleased with it? Yeah, but the title's changed. Oh, what is it now? Belief Police Dismisseth Us. What was the video <laughs> like? You've just finished the video. It's great. And who's in it? Spice um, Girls? Spice Girls, me. Too much of me. How much song is it? Telling me. On top of the world. Sing it. You sing, uh... No, I don't know it. Sing it. Hang on. Give us a C. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's a form for again. embarrassment. Going to the, to the Marilyn Manson thing, what did you make of the uh, self-styled Antichrist? I wasn't sure about his backside myself. No? You liked it? That's I did, but well, no, it's nice and tall, so I thought. Jesus, that's firm, bro. <laughs> yeah. Now, is this something you've seen all before, like, you know, with Alice Cooper? I've never seen his backside before, and uh, I'll never want to again. Fine. I don't like him much, you know. You just know his dad's a victim. I think if you're going to do that yeah. thing, look a little bit like a girl instead of Boris Karloff. Right. So not inspiring. What about <laughs> you? Would you uh, fancy a blind date with him? <laughs> no, we, we went to um, Germany just last week, yeah? And in the dressing room in the Berlin it was, and it was like, um, all these graffiti on the walls. Boiled virgin, and infected infection, and a syphilitic pope, and all these, like, real, like, you know, angry young well, men, remember goth these, like. things. I don't know, because it was full of it, it was mental. Did was you write something on there as well? Yeah, I wrote poetry in silicon. <laughs> <laughs> something romantic, you know what I mean? Yeah. Ian, what about you? Are you uh, not particularly a great fan of rock and roll success? Fucking up. Uh, you watch that thing, you need to have a bath with a wire brush. Yeah? Yeah. Is it all that kind of excess that made you want to go and be a gardener at one point? Because you were talking about how you wanted to you know, go back to nature. Yeah, I wanted to do something clean and fresh. There's a lot of dirty people about, you know, and this is one of the dirtiest. So do you do gardening? Do you? Uh, no. <laughs> So you, 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 also in the news this week, former Antichrist John Lydon has uh, just been signed up to present uh, the adult version of Tiz Wars, is what he's calling it. What do you think of John Lydon? Yeah, I think that? he's right, he's right. He's an entertainer, <laughs> and he's entertaining. No? Did you eventually get into punk? Yeah, I got, you know, God Save Day come out, uh, Anarchy, I think. Pretty a week after that, Bill Gundy thing, yeah. thing they put in, in Woolworths, 39 pence. Yeah, so 39 like pence? three copies between us, you know. Do you, I mean, eventually ended up going to the... the your record company like messing up the whole office and sort of doing a bit of anarchy yourself was that just for fun yeah, or that was just safer than doing it with a bat <laughs> really it was a smart way of doing it yeah <laughs> what about you ian were you into punk or what did yeah. it mean to you i had uh, green trousers green trousers and, bondage uh, orange lemon and tangerine so very can you yeah, remember the, <laughs> can you remember the first punk record you heard but that was only on a thursday on punk night so and then i was at uh, <laughs> So what have you done? They did Shandy for 20p or something. I was discoed up on the Friday. It was one of them clubs, you know. And on Saturday it was gospel night. And I used to like Johnny Rotten, but I, I don't like Johnny Lydon. You don't respect him now, John Lydon now? I'm not even respect, I don't like him. Why? Why? Because I like Johnny Rotten, his hair looked miles better when he was Johnny Rotten. And I think he's... He is entertaining, but... You don't like his hair. Oh, I like it. I'm like going to go with Ian. I, I love it. All right. The next month sees the hyper. Now the attention. Sean Ryder, proud of his flowing locks, obviously. Ian, was it all pills, thrills, and belly aches? Did that make you feel good when you watched that back? Yeah, the belly ache come later. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, how'd that make you feel watching that? When I seen that, then I thought, first thing I thought, oh shit, because the Mondays are signing on now, you know. And it was great. How, what did you think about um, when you were voted the second most important album of all time, that Channel 4 programme? I thought it was ridiculous, you know, uh, Steve Wonder's 54, I think Marvin Gaye was 23, 24. I think from England, it's one of the best LPs from England. Why do you think it got voted as number two then? Probably because, you know, it, since the Rose, it, it's been like Oasis and the Beatles and that, that 60s thing and, you know, White Northerners, that, that thing, you know what I mean? Yeah. And yeah, also, yeah. I think is it was the best album in Eons. Ages. And because the people who were voting were probably younger, and they don't want to say that Sodden Van Morrison yeah. is number two. 
but style counts at number three. I think they could have been slightly higher. <laughs> what did you think of Manchester? What did it mean to you at the Manchester. time? Manchester. Yeah, the whole scene. Well, it was a good place to go mad in. And did you go mad in there? Yeah, <laughs> very much. And uh, I needed cups of saliva every five minutes. Cups of saliva? Yeah, they knocked them out. You know. Did they? They were something more expensive than the other. <laughs> a two pound fifty a bottle of saliva, yeah, you please. You can't buy saliva on a Saturday night in money. Did you have the Baldrick haircut and do all the, you know, weather flares and that whole stuff? No, I used to do Peter Gordino dances. <laughs> what did Baggy mean to you? Did you get into it at all? Look, did it pass you by? Well, I, I went straight from Swansea to um, Barcelona, like at that time. So I sort of kind of missed out on it a bit. And then, um, but when I get, got back and it was about 90. 91. Seven, to be honest, yeah, no, when I, when I started first year in there, it's just, I don't know, it's just all the songs <laughs> like, are just beautiful, aren't they? It's just beautiful, and just feel beautiful when you listen to it. That sort of like Duran Duran, the ABC, and all that sort of thing that was going on, all shape of like that. It was just a lovely cheer proper, you mm -hmm. know, as if you could believe that they were doing it properly, you know what I mean? There were two groups, I think, from that whole period who were truly great, and they were them. Would well, you think the whole thing would have taken off without the drugs, without the ecstasy? Or was it rooted in ecstasy? I know, when we used to at the stage, the intention is hit the bass drum for the belly, the snare drum for the head, high up for the shoulders. Whether it could have happened without the ecstasy, I don't know. It couldn't have happened without House and the stuff that was going on in Chicago, could it? Uh, no. Because the crowd was already there, the kids already wanted it, you know. People wanted, to, they wanted that community feeling, that, that dancing thing. You know, it was on kill to dance in Manchester then. But now kids could dance. And how long did it last for before the belly ache started? About a year probably, and then it's all the major dancers moved in. Then all the guns came in. It's probably fair to say that Liam Gallagher wouldn't exist without this man who's sitting opposite you. What is it? Lot lot his dad, sorry? You know, his mother's dad had something <laughs> to do with it. <laughs> I'm sure the spirit of you was probably looming somewhere above.